All right, so that's question 13. Uh, let's look at question 14. Look. Oh, wait, there's a video. So let me see if I... Uh, oh, I see. It's that um, uh, guy in an accelerator video. Um, I feel like that uh, might be enough for help for you guys. Um, let me just do the one part. Because I think um, I do see people struggling on this question and looking at that other lecture video, sometimes uh, people, don't, um, people don't connect everything together. So you have, are given some acceleration and it asks for what is the magnitude of the normal force. So the thing to look at is the uh, force diagram up here. So it looks like we are just looking at the passenger, or you can um, choose to look at the, just the passenger, because I guess we don't really care about what happens to the accelerator. And there are so many forces there. I don't want to deal with the three forces. Passenger has two forces. They are predictable. They are nice. This downward force is gravity. This upward force is the support force, or what you, what um, support force, or what I uh, grew up saying, normal force. But support force is basically the surface pushing the passenger up. Then, um, what you should figure out is the situation here describes a situation where kind of a net force is equal to zero. Uh, I deliberately drew um, force four and force five um, as being equal magnitude. So that it's illustrating the situation where there is a zero acceleration, zero net force. Now, if we want to get upward acceleration, as it says here, elevator accelerates upward, what kind of modification would you need to make to this, uh, to this force diagram? So we want these forces to illustrate something that's going to accelerate upward. And as you think through, through that, I hope you come to a conclusion that um, the only way to achieve that is to, ch to change the existing forces. Gravity is not something you can change unless you take the thing to another planet altogether, but we're not doing that. So what can change is the support force. So if we want upward acceleration, what that means is we need upward net force. So I have two forces, one downward, one upward, <laughs> and if you want upward net force, then you better increase the upward net force by some amount, so that um, so that when you add up this upward net force with the gravity, then they add up being slightly upward, which will give me the basis for uh, and give me the basis for calculating this magnitude of normal force. So what you should remember is um, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> what you should remember. Um, so, so all right. I, I think I can say this. The net force, uh, which is going to be some of the two forces minding the directions, Normal force is upward. Let me call that positive. I'm just going to use the letter N for normal force minus um, the, the, I say minus because the next force is downward. So minus the downward force uh, of gravity, the gravitational force is equal to mg. And at equilibrium, that should be equal to zero. And uh, um, yeah, should uh, describe 
equal to zero. So um, equal to zero at the, at sorry uh, at equilibrium. So uh, once it's no longer equilibrium, where we are talking about something actually accelerating upward, then what we should say instead is this is equal to mass times acceleration. So, so far, uh, up to this point, you were used to normal force simply being equal to mg. And oftentimes it is, but not always. And this is the not always case. Um, you can do algebra to solve for n here. It's kind of a, a single step algebra. All you have to do is move this mg over. So I would uh, add on both sides by plus um, um, plus mg. Then I get, this is the normal force I'm going to get. That normal force is equal to mass times acceleration plus mass times g. So, all right, I think I have all the information. I'm given the acceleration, I'm given the g, I think I'm given the mass, <laughs> I need to use mass of the passenger. Mass of the passenger is 54 kilogram. So, um, so, and it says use the approximate value of G. So, um, 54 kilogram times the acceleration of 10 is 540 newtons. All right, that's one. Let me write it down so that I don't forget. Uh, this is not 540. It's, uh, um, it's not the mass times acceleration. That is the mass times G. That's the value I was using. For mass times acceleration, then we have to look at the given value of acceleration here. The given value of acceleration here is... 1.5 meters per second squared. So this term here is going to be mass, 54 kilograms, times one, uh, 1.5. I don't think I can do that quite in my head, especially while I sleep deprived. So let me do this here. <laughs> 54 kilograms times 1.5, 81, 81 newtons. So that should be additional force here. So the magnitude of the normal force as the elevator accelerates upward, basically pushing the guy upward more than it normally does when they are perfectly at rest with the zero acceleration, uh, should be some of these two numbers to give you 621 newtons. So let's plug that number in and hope that um, the answer is correct. <laughs> Sorry, I'm um, so sleepy. 621 newtons. Uh, submit to see if, if that's correct. And that particular question is correct. Good. Now we can move on. 